now I'm gonna zoom into the physical server architecture. Like what's inside of a server? We got the CPU, we got the RAM, which is memory. We got the storage, which is the hard drives. We got the network because ultimately that server needs to connect to the internet or the rest of the network, right? What we have on top of it is the operating system. Now you can think of the operating system as a manager that has multiple employees that it's managing. So the CPU, RAM, storage, network all become the employees that the operating system as a manager is managing. For what? Ultimately, we're gonna be running an application on that server. I gave you the example, like a call manager, right? Which we now call CUCM. Could be the call center solution, the UCCE. Could be any type of database or the application of your choice. Could be any application. Could be a web server application, right? But ultimately, the idea here is we have the underlying hardware, then we have a layer of software that is managed through operating system, which becomes the middleware, so to speak. And then that middleware manages all the physical resources that that application needs to be able to function. This is how traditionally we deployed servers. For each application, we bought a separate physical server. Now that changed in early 2000s when virtualization started to take hold thanks to VMware. There were other virtualization solutions on the market way before VMware, but VMware is what commercialized the virtualization technology for the masses. And since then, VMware has been the most successful virtualization company on planet Earth because of their ability to be able to take the physical server and do some magical things with it. And what do I mean by those magical things? I'm going to explain on the next slide. So now we take the same physical server that has CPU, RAM storage and network, but instead of an operating system, we install a hypervisor. So I gave an example of VMware. VMware's hypervisor is called ESXi. Microsoft has their own hypervisor. It's called Hyper-V. We also have KVM. So there are different type of hypervisors that are available on the market that you can leverage that are installed on top of the server. And then what that allows us to do is to provision virtual machines or VMs on top of that hypervisor, but each VM has a certain amount of CPU, RAM, storage type of resources allocated. For example, in this case, it's app one. Let's say it's a web server. So it may need eight core CPU. It may need 16 gigs of RAM. It may need 200 gig of storage. So what we'll do, the hypervisor will look at the request for this web server and depending on the options we picked when we were configuring this, let's say we're using the VMware vCenter solution. So we're in the vCenter and a GUI, we are configuring a VM and that VM has certain amount of vCPUs. It has vStorage, it has vRAM, it has vNetwork and all of those things are being provisioned by the hypervisor. And on the physical server itself, which is called a host, we may actually have a 24 core CPU server and we may have 96 gigs of RAM and we may have one terabyte of storage and we may have redundant 10 gig network interface cards on the server. But each virtual machine is just going to take a small slice of these resources that are located on the host machine. And it's all done through the magic of hardware virtualization. So now we understand how a server is virtualized, but now the next question most likely in your head would be, how do we connect the virtual machines to the physical network? How does that happen? Great question. So remember, we got at the top, we got the virtual machines. Then right underneath that, we got the virtual hardware. And then what ends up happening is the network component of each virtual machine may have a single VNIC or a virtual network interface card, or it may have multiple VNICs 
But ultimately, all these VNICs from different VMs terminate into a V switch or a virtual switch. This is a virtual network. It's not physical. It's all logical constructs. And then we have the physical world. We have a physical network. We have a physical switch. And what ends up happening is the server has physical NIC cards on it, right? So we would take those physical NIC cards, those two 10 gig ports that I was referring to on the previous slide, we would go ahead and plug them into the physical switch, into the 10 gig ports. So by having redundant links, we have high availability and redundancy. Most likely those are gonna be trunk links, which means they're gonna be carrying multiple VLANs because most likely if you have multiple virtual machines, each virtual machine may be in a completely isolated VLAN. Some VMs may share certain VLANs if you have a reason for them to share VLANs. But in other instances, we may be completely isolated. That's totally okay. Because we could make the routing happen at the physical switch level. Ultimately, this is how the physical NICs are mapped to the virtual environment through the V switch or the virtual switch. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.